Let's talk about unit operations. So we have been talking about what are pumps and that a reactor is a unit operation, but let's get more formal into it. So in chemical engineering and related fields, because this is not only for chemical engineering, if you are in mechanical engineering, you're going to have also unit operations as well, is any basic step in a process. So you might say, what's a basic process? Well, that is of course, the main point of unit operations. You can define unit operations inside unit operations. So for example, we're going to cover what's a condenser and a condenser will have pipes. So we are going to cover pipes, which per se are unit operation, but the condenser is also a unit operation because it's doing the task of condensing. And eventually we're going to see distillation and typically we require condensation in a distillation column. So we have a unit operation inside a unit operations. And of course, the condenser is not uh, transporting the fluid alone. It's, it's going to require also a pipe. So the pipe is going to be as well in the unit operation. So we have unit operations inside unit operations. The overall idea is to know that you can separate, and typically we do this in order for us to understand it and be able to model it. If we are interested in distillation of maybe a spirit, alcohol drink, well, of course, you're not that interested on the transport of the liquid in the pipe, which is only 10 centimeters. So you are going to use the distillation as a overall unit operation. So let's check out the different types. We have at least four or five different types of unit operations. The first one will be fluid flow. As the name implies, fluids will be flowing through these operations. These are essentially filtration, solid fluidization, or fluid transportation. For example, moving water. If you're in your house and you want to take a shower, that is a unit operation. And this is a fluid flow process, which is going to bring water from the main pipe. It's going to be using a maybe a pump up to the second floor of your room and you're going to be able to shower. Heat transfer processes include evaporation and heat exchange. So if, for example, you like to shower with hot water, you're going to require a heater for that water. You don't want to boil the water, so you're not going to use an evaporator. You're going to use the heater, which is going to heat the water and you will be able to shower with warm water. Also mass transfer, this includes gas absorption, distillation, extraction, absorption, and drying. There are plenty of mass, processes, mass transfer processes. And maybe you think that when showering, you do not have any mass transfer process, but actually you do have. When you have warm water, what happens is that water has calcium and magnesium and carbonate ions. When temperature increases, they will start depositing or they will start covering the tube, that's called falling, and it will start, let's say, impeding or will not allow the flow of water through these small pores or tubes in the, wa in the water section. Why does it, this affect our operation? Because then you're going to require more pumping, uh, which re implies more energy. Thermodynamic processes, such as gas liquefaction, refrigeration, and so on, so of course you finish uh, showering and you want to go to your room. You have, let's say it's very, very warm outside and you want to refrigerate your room. You use an air conditioning. This is a thermodynamic process. Then we have the mechanical process, which includes transportation, crushing, pulverization, and sieving. This is most likely used in process uh, engineering or mechanical engineering. Chemical engineers do it as well. But because this is, there are not that many chemicals involved, this is essentially solids manipulation, this is not that used in chemical engineering, even though a chemical engineer can do it. Let me bring you an example, probably we talked about already some of them, but this covers more. So this right here is a tank, it has an agitator, so if you use this tank only to mix or agitate a mixture, then it will be a agitator. If you are actually using these to convert A to B, this will be called a batch reactor. So it depends what are the uh, objectives. 
So right here we have maybe the same tank, this is a diagram, but this is real life. Of course, you're going to have much more utilities, pipings, instrumentation, and so on. This is the hole, typically called manhole, in which a human can go inside and clean it, and so on. This right here, make a guess. What do you think this is? Sometimes I've heard this is only a piping system. Well, actually, it is not. This will uh, cost a lot of money to build, buy, and maintain all these right here. But actually, this is a heat exchanger. What you do is you have flow, you make a fluid flow through these small tubes, and this is a big tube. So in the big tube, you make a, another fluid flow, and they will exchange heat without mixing. This is a heat exchanger. It is actually shell and tube uh, heat exchanger. And I got right here the distillation column. So this is in diagram. You will most likely see that typically in the diagram we place the condenser up here. In real life we have it on the floor right here. So this is the vapor goes and condenses here. And then the condenser brings it, pumps it, and throws it up here. And as stated before, guys, I want you to be able to relate to real life images, to diagram images, and to pipe and instrumentation diagrams. So what is this? Essentially, is the diagram. We're going to see that these are pipes, then this will be heat exchangers. This is fire heater, essentially a furnace. What you do is to burn a fuel and crude oil comes here, gets heated, increases temperature, then goes to the crude oil. All this means the initial and final stages, pressure of operation. Right here we have a flash drum, which actually is the reflux drum, but essentially it's a flash which separates gas and takes away the water. Some will be recycled right here, so that's why it's called a reflash drum. We got an A cool condenser. The important part right here is to understand that this is a condenser. What else do we have here? We get pumps, several pumps to move fluids. We got uh, coolers, heaters, what else do we have? The salter, as the name implies, removes salt. A brine is nothing more than water with high concentration salts. We got the crude oil and so on. So by the end of the course, you will be able to identify each unit operations. How do they work? Which models do we need? And so on. So hopefully you get the idea of what is a unit operation because we're going to be talking a lot. And don't stress that much on the formal definition if maybe this is a unit operation or if this is a set of unit operations because we're going to be analyzing each unit operation. So don't worry, it's important that you understand the overall idea, but don't hesitate to maybe think this is a unit operation inside another unit operation.